Welcome to Installing Wrap Proxy on Windows, brought to you by Secure Ideas. In this episode, we're going to install Wrap Proxy, and we've already installed SigWin. So if you haven't installed that, make sure you go out and view that tutorial. Here we need to go out to code.google.com slash p slash wrap proxy, where we can actually go out and download the current version of the application. Once we get out to the screen, we'll want to go ahead and click on the download and then save that file. Once we have the file saved, we want to just go ahead and unzip it. I'm using 7-zip to extract the files. And then once I go to extract those, I want to select my SigWin directory where I previously have installed SigWin, uh, which is required for Wrap Proxy to work. So we can go out into our SigWin directory and we'll extract the tar.gz file out into that directory. Now the next step is to go into our SigWin directory and identify our wrap proxy file and we need to use 7-zip again to extract it right into this directory so it'll be in the root of the SigWin folder. Now that we have the wrap proxy folder there, there's a few things we need to do. First we need to update the flare distribution uh, so we can just open up the readme file and inside of there, we actually have a link to be able to go in and download the flare distribution for the type of operating system that we're on. Since we're using Windows, we want the flare 06 uh, for Windows zip file. We can just open up Internet Explorer or Firefox, your favorite browser, and just browse to that location and then save that file. Again, we'll save this right down to our current location and then we'll extract it all out into that SigWin slash wrap proxy slash flare dist directory. Once we have this file saved down in, there's a few things that we need to go in and do. So we're going to go ahead and extract it and we're going to go ahead and replace the data that's currently there in that folder for us. This gives us our latest version. And then once we go back in there, we can now see we've been updated. We want to get rid of the previous flare file that existed just so it doesn't cause any problems. And then we're all done with updating our flare installation. The next step is to go into our make file. And in here, we have to go in and make a change before we can actually make our application. So we just need to do a search here and there's a specific string that we need to find so we can update this so that way we can actually do a proper make on the installation. So we're looking for the WNO pointer dash sign symbol and we just want to go ahead and remove that from the file. And then once we do that, we can save the file out and now we're ready to go ahead and make our wrap proxy application. So go back out to SigWin and start SigWin.bat, which fires up our terminal. And then we're going to change directories out to our wrap proxy directory. And then we're going to make our file. So we just type make. However, if you see this error, that means we have to make some sort of change in the code. And this is because we're on Windows. Uh, so we just need to go in and actually open up the wrap proxy.c file. Uh, I have Visual Studio installed, so it will open up in Visual Studio for me. This could be done in a regular text editor as well. And then we're going to go to the specific line number of the error message that we saw. In this case, it was 1635. Uh, and on this line, in our while, we have to cast that X parameter that's going in there. Now that we make that change, we can save our file back out. And now let's go back over to our terminal and go ahead and try to make it again. If you didn't get the error the first time, you don't have to make this change. If we get the error, we make the simple change. We can now see that the file made, so it compiled properly for us. And now we're actually ready to use wrap proxy. So we're going to go in here to another command terminal, and I'm going to change directories out. So that way I can get into my SigWin directory because I want to actually start wrap proxy. 
uh, the command displayed on the screen for us, rapproxy.exe dash V, the path to our rap proxy application, where we want our log to go, what port, we're going to use port 8080, and then a bunch of command line arguments. And this is really going to allow us to test out our application to make sure that our installation worked and that we can actually run through the rap proxy proxy server. So once we get this all in, we can see that rap proxy has now started successfully and it's now waiting. So now we're going to go out and we have to set up our settings in Internet Explorer or Firefox to make sure that our browser is now going to use the proxy. We're going to set it up as localhost since we're running locally, change our port to 8080, go into advanced to make sure that everything is listening on the same ports. Make sure also that we turn off automatically detect settings, otherwise this won't work. And now we're going to go out. I have a custom install of DVWA for us to actually test against. And once we load into DVWA, we're just going to walk through some of the application. Click on a few links. Click on uh, a few pages where we're going to enter in some data and just test the site as a normal tester would test it. There's nothing special that we're trying to do. We're not trying to hack it. We're just looking for using the application as normal and let Rap Proxy do its thing behind the scenes. Now that we've hit a few pages, hit Control C back in our terminal, it stops Rap Proxy. Now we can switch back over to our SIGWIN terminal and we can generate our report using the Rap Proxy dash report.sh, uh, passing in our log and then exporting it out to our report.html. Now, when we go back into our wrap proxy directory, we'll now see our HTML file that's been generated, report.html. And now when we open it up, we can actually see the results from wrap proxy. So we can see post query with no XSRF protection, bad caching headers. And it's going to give us a lot of information about what was found. And we didn't have to do any specific security testing. This was all done for us, just testing our application normally. Uh, so this is how we can run Rap Proxy. It's very simple to set up. Uh, I hope everybody had a good time going through this tutorial.